Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it's our Tuesday Let's Chat. And today I have the beautiful Emma Matthews with me. Emma is an amazing business owner, and I'm going to let her talk more, but she's the author of the book Stop Giving, Start Living from burnout to chill out and she's going to talk a little bit about that today we I'm pretty happy that she's actually here doing this chat because we all suffer a little bit of burnout in our lives so she's going to hopefully give us some good tips about this so Emma I'm going to hand it over to you to just give us a little bit of insight into who you are <laughs> and what you do yeah, thanks, Sharon. Thanks for having me here today. It's it's always fun to talk about my experience with burnout and what's brought me here today. So yeah, a few years ago, I was working in a really high pressure job and wasn't giving myself enough time to give back to myself, to nurture myself. And after a few months of really feeling fatigued and wearing myself further and further into the ground I wasn't sleeping well I was stressed because of the work that I was doing and um, basically just led to a bit of a meltdown one night and I, I was doing shift work as well oh, so yeah. I had the added sort of stress of sort of the disruption to my sleep cycle and that sort of thing and I, I just couldn't do it anymore I just started crying. I was just really upset. I was just like, I couldn't, I couldn't take any more thinking or stress or I, I just reached a, a point of exhaustion and overwhelm in a big way. And, and that's what eventuated in my burnout. Yeah. And it's pretty, it's hard when you get to that point because sometimes you're at that point when it's happened but being able to see the signs before it happens, yeah. is that the sort of thing that you help well, people with or? Yeah, that's right. So for me back then, there were little signs leading up to that, that fateful night. <laughs> yeah. But I just didn't notice them. I didn't notice them that they were signs or symptoms of oh, stress and exhaustion and stuff. Mm. Yeah, now I really, I'm really looking to help hold people's hand through burnout yeah. or ideally help people avoid burnout if they're feeling like they're overworked, under a lot of pressure and just giving too much out and not giving themselves enough time. Yeah. Uh, because I know what it's like. I've been there myself. It is actually hard to say no sometimes yeah. if we're in this if we are generally a giving person that's really it's it can be a really challenging thing to stick up for yourself and say look I can't manage that right now or yeah I can't take on that extra piece of work it's a hard thing to do so yeah. through coaching now and helping other people through the challenges like the modern day challenges that we all go through mm. it's about self-management really yeah definitely. And, and learning what's right for you as an individual and uh, so I really want to hold people's hand through that process of, of relearning what they are capable of and what's actually he a healthy sort of limit for themselves yeah yeah and with regards to burnout I'm going to get you to give us a tip about it, but what are some of the symptoms that you had when you were experiencing this? Yeah, I guess it's probably important to talk about some of the symptoms in the lead up to my burnout. And some of the things were that I had, I used to get these sort of twitching sort of sensations around my eyebrows and my eyes. Yeah. And sometimes my lip would twitch as well. And yeah. At the time, I just thought, oh, what's my face doing? This is just, mm. this is so annoying. I didn't see it for what it was. And, yeah. and now I realise it was stress and it was my yeah. body telling me that I needed to stop, take a break, take some deep breaths, 
I removed myself from what I was doing and reset myself, but I didn't see it for that. So that, mm. that's something that I experienced. And another big one was just a real deep fatigue. So I'd, yeah. as I said, I had, I did have sleep disruption due to working a shift work job, but when I did have good a good few nights sleep, I'd just wake up in the morning feeling completely exhausted, not rested at all. Yeah, you know? like I just sort of just dragging myself out of bed and mm. just to do the simplest things, get dressed, do my teeth. It was just such a big chore. I just didn't have any any energy to face yeah. those normal day to day things that we would just take for granted yeah. or just do. Off yeah. the top of the hat sort of thing it was yeah. just yeah yeah so it was really um, it was really hard and once I was in that once mm -hmm. I was actually at that point I was just dealing with the immediacy of it I wasn't I, I couldn't think um, as to problem solve my way out of it I was just immersed in this sort of foggy struggling sort of world that I felt like I just had this huge weight on my shoulders. So yeah. you know, best to avoid it if you can. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Yeah, yeah, it's really hard. And if you could give us one tip, so from your book, which mm. I'll get Emma to pop in the chat after we finish the interview, if yeah. you are interested in having a look or reading the book or connecting with Emma, she'll pop some links in after we uh, get off today G if you could give us one tip from your book of how to avoid burnout what would that be I guess it comes it really comes back to that self-awareness of of our needs because everyone has different needs like a, a friend of mine could might be able to push herself a little bit more than I could or you might be comparing yourself to some high performer at work or mm. a manager at work who you know, works long hours and that sort of thing. And yeah, it's easy to draw those sort of comparisons because we see those people every day yeah. frequently, but it's, it's, it's coming back to you and really discovering what your limits are and mm. what your capabilities are. And I just didn't have that self-awareness at all. I, yeah. for whatever reason I, I wasn't it just wasn't on my radar I wasn't I, growing up I wasn't taught about that sort of thing or yeah it just it took burnout for me to really learn about my own needs and that comes back to self-awareness one thing that's that really helped me on a path to learn it to gain some self-awareness was mindfulness and mindful being mindful of yeah just whatever you're doing in the day, whether it's making a cup of tea, brushing your teeth, just really focusing on that activity and that activity only yeah, as a way to come back to yourself. And it allows you to reflect a little bit because yeah. those little moments of quiet time are quite rare yeah. in each day. And if we can just do, have little bits of quiet time and, and take and do mindful actions, be mindful in our actions, just with simple things that mm. we do, then it, that really helps with self-awareness because it, you're retraining yourself. You're yeah. Training yourself out of old habits. Yeah. And that takes a while. That that doesn't just happen overnight. That takes months yeah. of work, really. Oh, and, definitely. <clears throat> yeah. And over time, you will learn to, to take those nice calming breaths when you're making a cup of tea when you're packing the kids lunch boxes mm. uh, use those activities even though you're active and you're doing something they can still be mindful activities and yeah. that was really beneficial for me yeah lovely I know recently I was on a retreat in July and we did a bushwalk meditation and it was lovely. a silent bushwalk lovely it was women, of course, yep. who all love to chat. <laughs> and 
the directive was that we stay quiet and silent for the whole um, meditative bushwalk. And it can be quite lady, challenging, can't it? Really challenging. <laughs> and the lady that was actually doing the meditation gave us prompts. Close your eyes and listen. And now open your eyes and see. Mm. And now close your eyes and smell. And when yeah. you stop talking and you stop that mind chatter, because when you're in that moment with somebody, you're missing out on all of this stuff that's going on around you. Yes. But when you turn exactly. that off and you really take notice, it's quite a powerful a thing to connect with. I was like, oh, what's that noise? You know, yeah oh, exactly a bird. and even for me because I'm a bit of a chatterer I was I've struggled with it a lot but the power that came from that for some of the ladies in that group it was unbelievable because it mm. was like some people talk to overcome that yeah to fill a void yeah or to feel something they feel like something's missing yeah, yeah. And often it can take that sort of guidance and uh, that that knowledge of someone external to you to get you back on track mm. um, to recalibrate or reset you want to on a different on a slower path yeah because it's not something that comes naturally we've got so much external stimulation in today's world yeah in the news social media we've got our work family commitments responsibilities yeah so that's all noise that we need to be able to shut out and it's a lot of noise it's a lot it's not something that that i'm saying is easy at all no. it takes a lot of hard work and focus yeah to and, and the other thing i did was meditation <clears throat> because my mind is i'm just i'm a very active you know, person who likes yeah. to think of different things and I'm an ideas person so I'm very creative and yeah it's hard to slow that all down and just take yeah, a step yeah. back and just just push all that away it's yeah. hard it's really yeah. hard and giving yourself permission to do that as well I think mm. is a really important tool to learn because yes. lots of us don't do that Yes, you're As right. women, business owners, wives, mothers, partners, whatever we have going on in our life, mm. I sometimes think that we don't give ourselves permission to have that yeah. space to rest and just be with ourselves. Yeah, you're right. And that's partly the, the title of my book, that's not giving part. Yeah. Is because. And I don't mean that you can't give at all. It's just being a bit more conscious about the giving that you do give. Yeah. You know, what, you, what the energy that you are giving away. Because um, I think growing up as a young girl, you're taught to nurture others, give to others mm. at the expense of yourself, at the expense of your own well-being. Yeah. And so that's what I brought into my adult life. Yeah. into my career yeah and it was to my detriment because i, I was, wasn't able to recognize my own needs to start off with yeah. let alone and then the next step is to stick up for myself and say yeah. what i needed yeah but i didn't even know what i needed so, <laughs> yeah yeah that's it yeah vision is a big part of the first step so that's it yeah and now you've got an event coming up can you tell us about that yeah, no, lovely. I'd be happy to, Sharon. So I have, I've got a, a meetup group called Self Care Journeys and a Facebook group as well, but I, I advertise my events at the moment on, on meetup and then that'll go into my Facebook group. But right. it's it's called Self Love Rituals with a Ayurveda. So I am, nice. I am a, a, becoming an Ayurvedic practitioner, which basically a Ayurveda is a, is a it means life wisdom that's what it means yeah, beautiful. and it's a sister it's related to yoga so yoga is the physical and the meditative sort of version 
or the side of the health and well-being and Ayurveda is the self-care and uh, the nourishment sort of side yeah. and so I really want to bring some awareness around what a, the self-care rituals of Ayurveda can bring to us in the modern world. Yeah. I think it, it does actually have a lot to offer us in terms of like establishing a sacred space that you yeah. can that you can go to if you want a bit of calm time. Mm. Cool. The other thing is a nice morning ritual is quite an important way to start the day instead of jumping out of bed and just you know, getting into oh, the yeah. shower and getting into the day. Why not try and slow down and have a nice morning ritual? Mm -hmm. And then I'm also including, we're just going to sit in circle with a nice uh, warm drink of our, of our choosing. And that'll be an online event. And I, I'm just, I think it'll be a nice nurturing yeah, event sounds, for people. Sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. So if you guys want to get on to that event, Emma's going to pop the link in the chat after we get off the meeting. Yeah. So please get onto that. That sounds like an amazing event. I might even come mm. to that one myself. If I yeah, sure. <laughs> sounds great. I love circle. I yeah. love being in circle, running circle, just being in the moment of it. I know. It's, I know. I'm really starting to value it more and more um, now as a, as a way of just not only coming back to ourselves, but being in the energy of, yeah. of other women or and other people in the group in that safe space it's just yeah. it's really lovely it's really it's actually really special it's yeah. a really special thing to be part of it certainly yeah. is yeah, yeah. so I, I really want that. to bring that back and make that part of people's lives again yeah. just, we often have our and that's the other thing it's about connection in today's connected to our workplace and connected to our families but there's often something missing mm. now that we can't put our finger on and yeah. I just, it's a lack of that that connection that we get from like-minded people each or, other yeah you know how you have a, you might have a craft group and like, like your lovely like your lovely group Sharon you come together and you do creative things together and, and that's just so that's just so nurturing and yeah. such a so good for our hearts Definitely. because yeah I just don't know if the connection that we have at, at, at our workplaces depends on where you work of course but mm -hmm. whether the connections we have at, at our workplaces are really nurturing for our heart it's more big picture ambitions and goals that those things are aimed at and yeah and it's, those sorts of things are really lovely to come back to ourselves and reconnect and yeah mm. really special beautiful i look yeah. forward to finding out more about that yeah now if you could tell us what your best business mindset tip would be yeah well, i was having to think about this and for me it's about maintaining focus amidst all the interesting, fun, amazing things that we can include in our business. So it's being able to maintain focus and your goals amidst all the noise. Yeah. So we might get distracted sometimes by what someone, who someone is doing or what else they're doing and that you might put that on your to-do list for next year or something. But yeah. it's about coming back and remembering your goal yeah so it's just yeah it's about being I guess it's, it's having that focus and that mindful path of where you're heading yeah yeah that's a big one for me yeah I love that thank you <laughs> anything else you would like to tell us that you've oh, got so I just wanted to share um, some creative stuff that I was doing over winter oh, yes, actually please yeah um, so I've been making these little hearts these little felt hearts yeah little you know, crochet not crochet blanket stitch around yes. the edge these hearts just I just felt it was just a nice thing to do I don't really have any intention for them yet like maybe they could be Christmas decorations yeah. you know? <laughs> but um, it was actually I mean, this is a mindful activity craft mm. and, and focusing on 
sewing. Yeah. Uh, it's fun to choose the colours and just focus on this small object. It's not really about the outcome for me and yeah. what, what it's used for. Yeah. It, it, it could be used for anything, but it's just, it's about the doing of it. Yeah. You know, that I really enjoyed. Being in that moment. Yeah. Mm. So that was something fun that, and just for me, I'd also sort of been doing over winter, just making some nice little hearts. Beautiful. <laughs> I wanted to share that. I yeah. love that. And can you just in the final few minutes, talk mm. to us about your book? Yes. Yeah, my book, Stop Giving, Start Living, it's, it's just been a lovely way for me to share my journey of recovery through burnout with the world. It was actually quite a healing process to do the writing. Um, it brought up a lot of stuff because, especially in the first chapter where I, I go back and basically relive what I went through that night that I had my meltdown right. was the start of my burnout it was it was actually really hard to write mm. <laughs> for tears and stuff again because yeah. it just brought back so many memories but through writing the book it's just it's really helped me process what I went through and look at it in a different from a different perspective yes it's part memoir and part self-help book so the first part of the book is on, on the experiences I had as a corporate sort of career woman and then as a mum with burnout. Yeah. And then the second part of the book, I talk about some of the secrets to my recovery, uh, some little mantras that I that helped me through, gratitude practice, and then some, uh, some inspiration that I found at, through my reading about trying to de-stress and calm myself down um, to help me just look outward and see what other people are doing around the world in terms yeah. of de-stressing. So I've got a chapter on burnout inspiration for, for chill out. Yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, so it's a bit of, it's a bit of, yeah, memoir, a bit of self-help. Right. Yeah, and I just hope that it can help or just bring some bring some information and break down some barriers around burnout because it is becoming more common, especially after our lockdowns that we experienced in the last couple of years, as mums working from home, schooling from home. It's been a tough few years and yeah, it's, if I can help break down some stigma around it and help people be willing to talk about the pressures that we face, then mm. I feel like it's a good thing to have done. Yeah. And, and knowing that it's okay to say I'm not okay. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, really speaking up, thing. yeah, yeah, and, and reaching out for help yeah. because there's lots of support network. I mean, we're so lucky today. Yes. We've got a free lifeline and Beyond Blue we can call up when we need. Yeah. Um, there's so many options, psychologists. You know, there's just so much out there. We're, 50, 60 years ago when my nan was going through sort of hard times, she didn't have anyone. She just had her friends. Yeah. That's so it. we're very lucky yeah. in today's world with what, with the options that we have for help. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure chatting with you, Emma. I've loved hearing your story. And if anybody is interested in Emma's book, she'll pop, drop the links below in the chat once we're finished. Yeah. Also, she'll pop a link to her event. What date is that event on? It, it is uh, Monday the 17th of October. 17th. So it's a Monday night. It's online. It'll be 7 Beautiful. p.m. Oh, yeah. perfect. It's nice All right. accessible. Lovely. So I'll get her to pop the links to yep. that as well. That, that sounds like a really nice evening to uh, connect with other like-minded people if anybody yes. wants to get in touch with them oh you i'll also get you to put your group or page in the link as well yes so if anybody yes. wants to connect with you they can pop over and do yeah, that wonderful. yeah wonderful thanks for having me on today sharon no you're really so welcome appreciate the time no you're so welcome thank you very much and thanks for everybody that was watching I know there were a few people, lots of people come on the replay later on. Yeah. So 
I'm sure that if, if you need any further info, you can get in touch with either myself or Emma mm -hmm. and we'd be happy to forward you the details. So, Definitely. Yeah. Yep. So thanks, Emma. Have a yep. great day, everybody. Yep. I, I will see you all again next week <laughs> and I'll chat with you yep. a little bit later. Lovely. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you, Emma. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.